short commute to Toronto. Um, it normally is an hour and a half. And, uh, Sorry, we missed you, Laurie. We missed Bob. And was, but now we're here. Uh, Lisa, that was brilliant. You, you say there are three literacy elements. We've got three. Oh, oh there. <laughs> All right, but we're going to uh, introduce our balanced literacy essentials, of which there are ten, through literature, of course. And Michael, and you want to add something? And I think you'll find that as we work our way through our 10 literacy essentials, that they fit very naturally into what all of the other authors are talking about. Um, when, when we talk about essentials, we're looking at the absolute basics that we want to have in place in our classroom in order to maximize engagement with our students. So at the very minimal level, we're talking reading, writing, and accountable talk. But we'll spread that out into the 10 essentials. And we're going to get you to work through an example with us so that you can see how these 10 essentials can work their way into a classroom, maybe in as simple as a 30-minute lesson, which is basically what we're going to go through right now. So we're going to start you with an activity in your circle, um, so in your table groups. And we're going to start you with, um, this is not a box. So if this is not a box, what is it? So in your table groups, everybody has to contribute. If this is not a box, what is it? Kids, it's not a banana. <laughs> OK, so come on back. If this is not a box, can we hear a couple of examples of what it really is? If it's not a box, what is it? Lost luggage. Okay, absolutely. For those of us who have traveled, it could be lost luggage. <laughs> in Canada in particular, okay. What else? What is it? It's a condo for mice. Oh. I'm hoping not because it was housed in my office. <laughs> but, great. What else? It's a foot dress. Okay, good. Low tack, but it works. Um, and we're going to um, take a look at a read aloud book, a book that we love um, because of its simplicity. And just taking a look at the way that the book has been constructed with students. And I'm assuming that many of you have seen this book. So it's wrapped in brown cardboard, this side up. And I have to honestly say a favorite book of my grandson's, um, along with the boxes. We buy him the most beautiful gifts at Christmas time, and what does he play with? The cardboard box. That box is everything and anything to him. So our agenda as we work our way through, we're going to go through the oral all the way up to how we might engage students in technical, technological applications of this book. So this is not a box. And it's dedicated to children everywhere sitting in cardboard boxes. Right. Why are you sitting in a box? It's not a box. How many of you saw it as a race car? What are you doing on top of that box? It's not a box. Why are you squirting a box? I said it's not a box. Now you're wearing a box? Anybody? This is not a box. Are you still standing around in that box? It's not, 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 not a box. Well, what is it then?
it's my not a box. So we start with this book, and actually we use this. Oh, no, I don't want that yet. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to hold that for later. Um, we started our year this year with the not a box theme because what we were aiming for with our students was to get them to think outside of the box, to get them to really explore what balanced literacy was in the classroom and how we can make our balanced literacy approaches and the tasks that we do in the classroom as engaging as possible. We realized, like Lisa, 100 minutes, barely enough to get our curriculum covered. And so what can we do about it? So our approach is to help our students and potential teachers to weave together as much as possible their reading, their writing, and their talk in the classroom. Looking for the curriculum links in curricular areas such as math, science, social studies, and also helping them to make the connection with technology as well as, for us, oral language, storytelling, and drama. These to us are balanced literacy essentials because they appeal to a wider range of students. Right, and we put, we put all these balanced literacy essentials under, um, under a metaphor of navigating. Uh, how do you get through 100 minutes? You've got to navigate. How do you get through te texts of all types? You have to know how to navigate. How do you write and create texts of all kinds? Well, you have to be a navigator, right, as well as a plain reader, writer, and talker. And our teachers have to be navigators. So that's the metaphor we chose. It's a journey, just like the rabbit, ready to blast off. And we use the rabbit as being kind of our inspiration because he is an adventurer. He's trying out new things. He's looking for new adventures. He's seeing the possibilities. And that's really what we're aiming for in our literacy blocks, is for our students to see the possibilities from a, a first level text encounter all the way to text production at the end and looking at the links as we move our way through. So we're going to continue on and we have established in our classrooms, one of our, our second essential is to establish reading aloud and literature as a routine in our classroom because there is much to be gained from an exploration of literature in the classroom. We can use it for social skills, we can use it for gathering, we can use it for community building. There are so many different things that we can do with literature in the classroom. And that's really the focus that we have put into each le lesson and each plan. And so you'll see in, um, in our book that we have two plans in every chapter and they are always literature based. And it's a step by step all the way through how you could put this into place, making your own adaptations. It's not lockstep, it's not a recipe, it's simply a plan that you can adapt. And we love the fact that Pembroke has these nice big wide margins because we are people who write in the margins. And we put our own notes in there and we personalize it and we stick those sticky notes in there so that we know when we come back to this activity, this is what we're going to try next time. And we talk about the fact that through a read aloud, it can become a, a touchstone text. And that way you can set your philosophy for the whole year. And uh, the reason that uh, we chose this book today was it was introduced, I, I hope some of you know it, um, but it was introduced to me through one of the teacher candidates who was in a classroom two years ago, a grade three classroom. You know, that's the big, the big APYO year, right? Um, this teacher, in the very first week of class, introduced Not a Box to her class, had all these wonderful activities, and told them this was going to be their not a box year. So I thought that was pretty courageous. A true courageous navigator and adventure. Okay, so we're going to bring you back to the, our introduction. If this is not a box, what is it? One of our, another essential is making that reading and writing link as clear as possible to students. Lisa talked about mentor texts. We will use mentor texts in our classroom. Not a box for us is a mentor text. So if it's not a box, what is it? And you have to mimic the author's or, and illustrator's style, and you have to create your own image and page that would go into this book. So I will put back up one example of the little bunny so that you can see what he looks like. But it is your task to create a new page and then we'll get them to share, we'll get you to share in your groups. So he's thinking, this is my not, 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 not a box, well what is it then? 
So your task is, well, what is it then? And you don't have to put it in the box. There is a box for you on the back of the page. <laughs> All right. And uh, this same author has now written not a stick as well, <laughs> which is a fair amount of fun for, a little, for, for kids. And it also makes that environmental connection um, for students as well. So poetry. For us, poetry is an essential. Um, and it's an essential because we want for our students to enjoy language. We want them to play with words. We want them to see the magic that comes of just rearranging words and trying it out in, in all of its different forms. So along with the Not A Box theme, we can introduce concrete poetry or shape poetry. So we are going to ask you to give that a shot and writing around the box, not in it, but around it to create your own poem about a box. And it can be in keeping with the same theme that you have been working with, or you could take it from a different perspective. But writing just a series of words and phrases around the outside to make a concrete poem. We believe drama is a literacy essential. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Sort of in this, in this box presentation, I'm sure it was wonderful. I'll have, well, I guess we'll have to buy a book now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, drama at, in all its forms, as a response to reading, as a way of creating dynamic text, as a way of communicating, as a way of expressing, as a way of showing what you've learned, what you know, what you would like to know. It's, it, well, it's, it's endless, isn't it? It's, it, can be, it can be any and all of those things. Uh, the best thing about it, of course, is the engagement that ensues. And we emphasize um, with all of our students, whether we're working with our pre-service candidates or whether we're working with little ones, we emphasize drama as participation and as process as opposed to always looking at the performance end of it. I know for myself, if you tell me I'm going to have to perform, I'm going to head out under that exit sign. But if it's participation and if I know that I can legitimately have fun, um, and actually I had a workshop in my pre-service year by uh, Dr. Barton, which I remember very fondly. And um, it was all about process. It was about participating. It was about having fun, exploring who you were, in relation to the world. That's what my goal is for drama, not just the performance end of it. Do I want to work toward performance? Absolutely. But I don't want it to be the sole goal. And that's what we encourage with our, our teacher candidates. Do a lot of low-risk, quick drama activities. And one of them is from our friend Larry Swartz. How many of you have tried minimal scripts in the classroom? It's a, it's a teacher candidate favorite. It's absolutely wonderful. I, if, you, if you don't know it, it's in Larry Swartz's <laughs> book, New Grandma Things. And uh, it's just a quick activity with four line scripts uh, done uh, <coughs> and where they say the lines all different ways. So it's just a whole list of different ways of saying the same four lines. And uh, we call it, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And the students love it. It's low risk. It can have a whole class to me at once, or it can be uh, a few people. Minimal scripts. I highly recommend it. All right. And so stor storytelling for us is, is looking at it as broadly as possible. It is storytelling at the oral level. It is writing those stories down. And then it is also making the link to technology and helping students to see that there are lots of different ways to tell a story. So that might involve an animation of some sort. So we're going to show you um, a student done. Um, and I believe it was probably um, a, a college or a university student who did this particular animation. But when I searched for other animations, I see them all over the place. That students are doing um, animations with don't let the pigeon drive the bus, where they have to figure out how to make the bus driver talk and move around. So this is one person's interpretation of um, not a box. Why 
So for us, a different type of mentor text because we can show students this particular text and now this can be something that they strive for from the very beginning. Um, so just to recap, because we've gone through these essentials really quickly, um, we'll offer you our essential and then just a quick touch base with what we did today. So the first essential is for us to be adventurers and navigators. We are learning with our students. We are all in this together, just like the rabbit that we saw in Not a Box. Two. Okay, number two, building a classroom community. And I know you've talked about that probably all day. I can hear references to it in what Lisa was saying. I'm sure it came up with Lauren and, and, and Bob. I don't know who else took this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but that creating a classroom community, nothing's going to happen without like that. It, it's an essential for literacy and all things. Thinking about the grade three teacher who said, this is going to be our Not a Box year. She has given them a metaphor for the entire year, something to hang their learning on, because she has alerted them to the fact that they're going to be thinking outside the box all year long. Three is a workshop structure where students can explore reading, writing, accountable talk all the way through, and they can see those connections all the way through. In this workshop structure, we want literacy centers so that the students can explore on their own with support at the stations that you have set up, that you have structured to really focus their learning. Literacy essential number four, constructive, accountable talk. It's the underpinning of everything. And I was so happy to see Lori fitting that into her 100 minutes everywhere. Because that's, that's where it belongs. It's everywhere. Um, and uh, you tried it right today with the this is not a box, that stimulated conversation. And the, the whole concept of accountable talk as well. Um, our teacher candidates are struggling with that right now as we speak. Five, um, our mentor, Dr. Thorne, would reinforce to us every single day that we were in class, read aloud every day. Every child every day deserves to hear a good book. So for us, reading aloud, kindergarten, all the way up. And if you can look for those connections into high school, and looking at some of the picture books that are out there, then do it in high school. We have a book that we use on a regular basis called The Waiting Dog. And this is not a book that you even think about reading below grade six. But beautiful book to bring into a grade 11, 12 biology lesson because it is anatomically correct. It talks about what the dog is imagining when the letter carrier comes. So I'll leave it and it's, it's graphic, graphic to say the least. But why not read aloud all the way up? So to us, every day a child deserves a good story. And uh, they also deserve direct instruction in reading and uh, a continuum of support all the way from modeled and uh, guided and into independent reading and any time for that, as, as Lisa showed us this earlier. And then the reciprocal process is writing. And we want that full continuum in place. And we want, as Lisa wanted, for our students to recognize that writing is their effort to put a mark on the world. And that they need to be guided through that. And where do we start? We start with what the child is writing. And sometimes that means, and I'm thinking about my grandson, the fact that he wrote his name on my living room floor in marker. Great big H on the living room floor. So we start with that. Excellent. You wrote an H. Next time, can we write it on paper? <laughs> and children need poetry. So we believe poetry is another literacy essential. It's, it's absolutely needed both orally and in all types of texts. Um, they need to hear poetry. They need to experience it. They need to try it for themselves. And it's fun. Nine, drama. 
in everything that we do, emphasizing that we can use drama to learn content, we can use drama to learn story, we can use drama to explore and understand ourselves. It's not just about the performance and the product at the end, it's about the process that we use to get through it all. Okay, and finally, storytelling. And uh, we showed you a sample of digital storytelling, which is a lot of fun, very engaging for children, of course. But don't forget traditional storytelling, uh, just that face-to-face, -face oral tradition of storytelling, where you actually get to see your, the eyes of your audience. You make that eye contact. Uh, just traditional oral storytelling, favorite stories. Okay, so that's our 10 essentials. And thank you for your attention at the end of the morning. <laughs>